Hey guys, it's Dr. Robotnik64, and this is a montage of all the new features videos that I did for the Minecraft 1.4 snapshots. So I decided to do this montage mainly to celebrate the release of the Minecraft 1.4 update, which at the time of recording this is going to be released tomorrow. However, I may upload this video maybe either, maybe either today or tomorrow, I'm not sure yet. But yeah, so I've decided to put all of my new features videos that I did for the 1.4 snapshots from 12w32a to 12w42a into just one video in a sort of montage style. So yeah, so hopefully this video should explain to you at least most anyway, maybe not all of the new features, but at least most of the new features that are going to be added in the 1.4 update, so yeah. And also at the top of the screen you will see the exact snapshot that I'm reviewing in the video, so yeah. So let's start the montage then. Villagers will now act positively towards new trades, and will act negatively if you hurt them. So as you can see, when you trade something with a villager, not only will he have like the usual pink swirls around them, but he also seems to have uh, almost like some green stars around him as well, which means that he's acting positively towards your trade. So there you go. Now if you actually hit the villager, here's what happens. So as you can see, he gives off another particle effect, which look like uh, clouds with lightning coming down from them. Which means he's acting negatively because you're hurting him. So yeah, some villager emotions basically. They'll act positively if you trade with them, and they'll act negatively if you hurt them. Now another thing they added with the villagers is that they'll no longer remove their trades, but trading something else with them means that they'll probably have to renew their old trades. So yeah, so some new stuff with the villagers, so on to the next feature. The next feature that they added is that they added the command block into the game. Now what the command block can do is that it can execute commands via redstone signals. Now this block is only intended for adventure maps, and it's also not craftable, and it's not available in the creative inventory menu, but it has a block ID of 137. So if you right click on the block, it'll come up with a uh, user interface, as you can see set the console command for block. So some of the commands that it gives you is that you can use at P to target the nearest player, at R to target a random player, and at A to target all players. So as you can see, you can put like this command in, give at P 80 30, and what it'll do is that when you flip the lever, it'll give you 30 snow blocks. And you can keep doing this over and over again, so it has like an unlimited supply of items. And give at P 137 1, and it actually gives me the command block, as you can see. So yeah, you can give yourself a whole bunch of items with this. So that's the command block, so on to the next feature. The next feature is, as you can see, they actually added a new kind of zombie in here, which is basically a zombie that looks like a testificate. So yeah, that's pretty funny. So is that what happens when zombies kill villagers now? Do the villagers turn into testificate zombies? But yeah, so there you go, a testificate zombie. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the testificate zombies are passive because... Uh, I actually tried to attack them, and as you can see, he didn't start chasing me or anything, so it's probably like a passive testificate zombie. And testificate zombies are also capable of spawning naturally in a Minecraft world as well. But yeah, so that's the testificate zombie, which actually gives me another idea. Maybe you could even create a village of testificate zombies. I'd like to see how that would turn out. But anyway, on to the next feature. The next feature that they added is that zombies and skeletons will have new equipment depending on the difficulty of the game. So I set the game on hard mode, and as you can see, there's a zombie holding an iron shovel. So he can attack you with an iron shovel now, basically. And here's a zombie holding an iron sword, so he can use swords on you now. And over here is a skeleton with a full set of gold armor. So yeah, so skeletons can wear armor now. They're basically prepared for you now. But it's not just the skeletons. Zombies are also capable of wearing a full set of gold armor as well. So there you go. So the zombies and skeletons are even more dangerous now, depending on what difficulty you're playing Minecraft at. Testificate zombies can do the same thing as well. As you can see, here's a testificate zombie carrying an iron shovel. So yeah, so zombies and skeletons can now hold tools, iron shovels, iron swords, and can wear armor, including gold armor. My goodness, they're even more dangerous now. But it all depends on what difficulty you're playing the game at, so if you're playing this on, like, easy difficulty, this won't really matter. They apparently also added a surprise block as well, and here's basically the surprise block. So as you can see, it almost looks like a new kind of transparent block almost, because as you can see, you can see right through it. And not only that, but when you place it down, it actually gives off light. So what could this block possibly be used for? It almost looks like a new kind of glass to me, like a new kind of glass that actually gives off light. 
Now, Mojang said that this block was still a work in progress. In fact, uh, when you actually when you actually put your cursor over the block, it actually says work in progress. So yeah, so at the moment it's sort of a uh, mysterious block right now, so what could this possibly be used for? A transparent block that gives off light, I wonder. And actually it might not even be glass, because I just found out that when you right click on it, it comes up with this menu right here. So what could this menu possibly be? It seems to have like all these like potion effects, I guess because these are potion effects primary power and secondary power so I, w I wonder what that could mean and on the menu there also seems to be an emerald, a diamond, a gold ingot, and an iron ingot so just out of curiosity I decided to put an emerald in but it didn't do anything so there's like two buttons here done and cancel but you can only click on cancel though so yeah that's kind of strange so yeah, I don't know what this uh, block could possibly be used for, but it still is a work in progress, so its real purpose might be uh, revealed maybe in the 1.4 update, so yeah. But yeah, so that's kind of weird. But on to the next feature now. The next feature is that they added a new potion called the Potion of Night Vision. And there you go. So it basically gives you night vision, so you can now see in the dark. Now as far as I know, this potion is only available in the creative inventory, so I don't think you can brew it yet with like a brewing stand or anything, so yeah. So as you can see, it basically lights up the entire Minecraft world, so you can see for like hundreds of miles, my goodness. And as you can see in the creative inventory, it shows night vision, and it also gives off some uh, very, I don't know, very blue swirls. So, uh, hold on a second. There you go, like very blue swirls, so yeah they added a new item called item frames and what you can do with the item frames is that you can put blocks and items onto it so you can like frame it you can frame all of the items and blocks available in minecraft and you can frame them by right clicking now if you right click on a framed item you can rotate it so as you can see i am rotating this diamond sword around and this also works on blocks as well so there you go rotate the tnt block there you go but yeah, so that's basically what the item frames can do, so you can frame items onto them. So on to the next feature. The next feature is that they added flower pots into the game. So as you can see, you can put uh, flowers and mushrooms in. Basically, you can put in any kind of plant in the uh, fl flower pots, so yeah. So I guess this could be used for, like, decoration maybe, but yeah. So that's basically what the flower pots do. Just hold uh, flowers, mushrooms, and cactuses in them. And that's pretty much their only purpose, so yeah. So on to the next feature then. Stairs will now auto-arrange in the corners. So as you can see, I'm placing uh, stairs side by side, and they're actually merging into like a corner. So there you go. Now Mojang has said that this is only a test feature, and it might change based on feedback, so yeah. But finally, you can have cornered stairs, so there you go. So on to the next feature then. Mobs can now travel through portals. So here's a creeper in a uh, nether portal. And wait for it, wait for it, he's gone. But where exactly did he go? He went to the nether, that's where he went. So I'm here in the nether, and there you go, the creeper just like appeared right there. So they can actually go through portals. Now this doesn't apply to just creepers, all the mobs can go through portals. You can probably even try it with the testificates they'll go through. So there's the uh, creeper in the portal, and there you go, he's gone again. But yeah, so you can send mobs through portals now. Now, I've actually only tried this with a nether portal. I'm not sure if this will work with an end portal, but probably it will, but I have to try it first. But for now, we're just going to go on to the next feature. Leather armor can now be dyed different colors. So as you can see, uh, I actually have leather pants in there in the crafting table, and I put a purple dye in, and as you can see, I actually got purple leather pants. A cyan dye, and I got cyan color leather pants. Light gray dye, I got light gray leather pants. Bone meal, I got white leather pants, and so on. So you can actually uh, dye them different colors now. You can also use combinations of dyes to make different colored uh, leather armor as well. Like for instance, I'm putting all these random dyes in. So, uh, random colored dyes. And that's the color I get. It's almost sort of like, I guess some kind of beige color? But yeah, so leather armor can now be dyed. So you can basically trick people into thinking that you're wearing different kinds of uh, armor, even though you're actually wearing leather armor. And actually, I think I might have found a, uh, another good way to use uh, dyed leather armor. As you can see, I'm wearing blue leather armor here. They could probably be used in, like, 
maybe like team player versus player matches or something like that. Like if player versus player matches that have like teams and they could be like the team colors maybe. So something like that. But yeah, so leather armor can now be dyed. So on to the next feature. Um, the next feature that they added is that they added two new kinds of crops into the game, which are carrots and golden carrots. So here's the uh, carrots, first of all. So as you can see, they're just carrots. And if you break them, they apparently drop carrots as well. So, yeah. Now the golden carrot, I'm not very sure what it does, actually. So, I don't really know. But it looks kind of weird. It can't be planted, but... Yeah, I, I don't really know what the uh, golden carrot could be used for. But yeah, so some new crops that have been added to the game. Carrots and golden carrots. So, on to the next feature then. The next feature that they added is that, as you can see, they added wooden buttons into the game. Now, these buttons behave like any other button. However, they can actually be uh, triggered by arrows as well. So, as you can see, I shot an arrow at the button and it actually opened the door. So, yeah, another way to open doors in Minecraft. That's pretty much all they do, so, yeah. Now also, the work in progress block has been removed from the creative inventory, but it can still be obtained by using the command give player name 138, so its block ID is still there. They also added cobblestone and mossy cobblestone walls. So yeah, that's basically what they look like, so you can create like small or small or big uh, walls made out of cobblestone and mossy cobblestone, so yeah, there you go. So I guess this could be useful for creating like huge builds, like maybe castles or something, but yeah. That's all there is to the cobblestone and mossy cobblestone walls, so on to the next feature. The next feature that they added is that they added a new potion into the game called the Potion of Invisibility. And basically what it does is that it makes your character invisible. So here's what it looks like, Potion of Invisibility for 8 minutes. So I'm just going to drink it here. And now I'm going to set my game mode to survival. And there you go, my character is actually invisible with only his uh, armor showing. So I'm just going to take the armor off here. And there you go, my character is just completely invisible. And if your character is not holding something, as you can see, his arm doesn't show up, so he's completely invisible. So yeah, so that's the potion of invisibility. So your enemies will basically never see you coming. And I guess you could also use this to scare the villagers as well, so yeah, I think you're a ghost. Yeah, apparently not, they, they still see me. They, they can see right through that disguise. My goodness, eight melon slices for an emerald. What a ripoff. Anyway, another feature is that a tame wolf's collar can actually be dyed as well. So as you can see, uh, I'm using the dyes on the collar by right-clicking, and it's actually changing the color of the collar, so yeah. So now you can have different wolf collar colors in addition to different leather armor colors, so yeah. Now, I was actually just on the Minecraft wiki, and there are actually more features than how much features I've explained in this video. But I think I might actually make a part two of this instead because I'm sort of in a uh, hurry right now to do this. Uh, I'll say why maybe in another video, but I think I'm going to end it off here now, so yeah. But I think I will actually squeeze in two more things in this video. Um, they actually added a new mob skin apparently, which is a wither. And here's what the mob skin looks like. But yeah, so that's the wither skin apparently, so what exactly could this mob be? So that's kind of strange. He appears to have three different faces, so maybe if you attack him, he changes, like, emotions, maybe. And not only that, but where will he spawn? Will he spawn in the overworld, or will he spawn in the nether or end? So, yeah, that's kind of, uh, mysterious. But I guess we'll have to wait and see in the future what he looks like, so, yeah. Or what he looks like in the game, anyway. They also added in a new technical biome into the game, which is a Jungle Hills biome. So basically, jungles can now generate with hills now, and that's pretty much all there is to that. And actually, there's a third thing. They actually fixed the uh, bug where zombies would not burn in daylight, so finally that's fixed now. They changed the crafting recipe for buttons. So as you can see, stone buttons only require one block of stone to be crafted, and wooden buttons only require one wooden plank to be crafted now. So yeah. They also slightly changed the textures for leather armor, mainly their item textures. And the reason they did this is so that the item textures can match the textures for the leather armor that can actually be seen when your character is actually wearing it. So yeah. So as you can see, the leather tunic is sort of different as well. Um, as you can see, it sort of has like buttons on it as well, which are these like small squares down there. So yeah. And also, the leather armor sleeves were apparently extended by one pixel. So yeah. Another feature that they added is that arrows that are on fire can now ignite TNT blocks. So I have a bow with power 4 and flame 1, 
And there you go. So the arrow's on fire, and it actually ignited the TNT block. And it killed that poor chicken over there, so yeah. They added in some new decoration blocks, which are apparently some mob heads. As you can see, there's a creeper head, a zombie head, a skeleton head, and a Steve head. Now these decoration blocks can be obtained from killing creepers, zombies, skeletons, and I guess the player, considering there's a Steve head. However, they will only drop very rarely, so it's not as though like every creeper you kill now will get decapitated and you'll be able to obtain their heads. It's not like that. Now the direction in which the head will be facing depends on what direction the player is currently facing. So as you can see, you can make it look as though the uh, heads are like staring at each other. So, yeah. Now another thing I've noticed with these new decoration blocks is that when you destroy them, they emit soul sand particles. I'm not exactly sure why, but I don't know. But there are some new decoration blocks for you, so on to the next feature. The next feature that they added is that they added a new skeleton mob called the Wither Skeleton. And here he is right here. So as you can see, he's a skeleton, except he's black. Yeah, that's right, racism in Minecraft, just kidding. But unlike regular skeletons, he's actually holding a stone sword instead of a bow. Now an interesting thing is that if you actually try to spawn a skeleton in the nether using a skeleton egg, sometimes it'll actually spawn a wither skeleton instead. And most of the time it does, actually. Alright, I'm going to send my game mode to survival here. Now when the wither skeleton attacks you, he will give you an effect called wither. Now what the wither effect is, is that it's kind of similar to the poison effect, but as you can see, it actually turns your hearts black, but with a sort of dark but visible outline, so you can actually still see how much health you have. And that's pretty much all it does, really. If you manage to kill a wither skeleton, he will drop bones and coal. And, on very rare occasions, the stone sword that he was holding. And also, on very rare occasions, his head. If you look to your left, that's a wither skeleton skull, which is another decoration block. So the wither skeleton also has a chance to become decapitated as well. And also, the wither skeleton will only spawn naturally in nether fortresses. Now, they also made some changes to the wither mob. You can actually spawn it now. And in order to do that, you need to place four pieces of soul sand in a vertical T-shape, and place three wither skeleton skulls on top, and there you go, you have successfully spawned a wither. Now as you can see, when you first spawn him, his uh, health meter actually starts going up, so it almost looks as though he's like charging up. And he also appears blue at first. And if you spawn him in the overworld, as you can see, the sky will actually become darker. Now if you manage to kill the wither, he will now drop a nether star, instead of just experience points. Now the only real use that the nether star has is for crafting the beacon block, which was the old work in progress block that was added back in 12W32A, but now it's actually called beacon and it has a new appearance. And here's what the new beacon block looks like. So as you can see it has obsidian on the bottom and actually on the bottom of the obsidian there's bedrock and it's protected by glass. It's some kind of yellow cube that is just rotating around almost like an ender crystal. And it now has a crafting recipe. The crafting recipe is five blocks of glass, three blocks of obsidian, and a nether star in the middle. But that's pretty much the only thing that they've changed with the beacon block. It just has a crafting recipe and a new appearance. Now as you just saw right there, when you break the beacon block, it still drops its old particles, which is a bug. They also apparently retextured the golden carrot, so it actually looks more like a carrot now. They also added in a new item called carrot on a stick, in order to craft that, you need a fishing rod and some carrots, and you get a carrot on a stick. Now what this item is used for is that it's used for controlling pigs. So as you can see, you can actually make your pig walk wherever you want it to go, and if you right-click, you can make your pig run faster. However, you still need to place a saddle on the pig first before you can actually use this item on it. But as you can see, if there's a pig nearby and you're holding the item, it'll actually start following you. Now speaking of carrots, you can now actually use carrots to breed pigs. So uh, right click and there you go. So you can actually breed them with carrots now. Now along with that, you can now breed chickens with seeds instead of wheat. Here we go. And apparently that chicken ran off over there, just let me get him. There we go. So yeah, so some changes made to breeding animals in Minecraft, mainly pigs and chickens. Now I actually forgot to mention this before. The uh, decoration blocks can actually be worn on the player's head. The only thing is that it interferes with the helmet part of the player's head. So as you can see, the entire head of my Dr. Quark skin is actually uh, a helmet part. 
And as you can see, the textures are like Zed fighting with each other, which is another bug. Also, if you kill a pig that's wearing a saddle, it'll now drop the saddle. So there you go, so you can actually get the saddle back, instead of losing it forever. They also made some changes to dyeing leather armor. Leather armor now actually has two overlaid textures, the first texture being the color of the leather armor. And when you're dyeing leather armor, the color of the armor will now try to maintain its intensity and not dilute as much. So you can now wear leather armor with brighter colors, basically. So uh, on to the next feature then. The next feature that they added is that carrots and potatoes can now be found either growing in villages or in jungle biomes. And here's something I also discovered. Um, I'm actually using the seed 0953845, which is the seed that I used to record some of my Minecraft New Features videos because it had a village at the spawn point. And I'm guessing because maybe of the minor world generation changes that they made, like things can now spawn in different places now. When you use that seed in 12W36A, the village will actually look different. But the weird thing is that the terrain doesn't seem to have changed at all. It still looks the same as the old version of the seed. The only thing that's different is the village. And also, the seed now spawns you on top of one of the villagers' houses. And there you go. So as you can see, the villagers are actually growing carrots in this village. So yeah, so villagers now grow different crops for a change. My goodness. They've finally gotten bored of just growing weed all the time, for goodness sakes. Dungeons can be found with more loot now, apparently. I highly doubt this, though, because I didn't really find a lot in this dungeon. Well, first of all, they changed the Wither mob a bit in the snapshot. So, as usual, when you spawn the Wither, he's blue and he's basically powering up. But once he's finished powering up, he explodes. He literally explodes. And there you go. However, no damage is done to the Wither at all, though. So the Wither Mob is harder to fight now, because when he's finished powering up, he causes an explosion. So, and that's the only thing they changed with the Wither, so on to the next feature then. In the Select World screen, there is now a new button called Recreate. Now what this button does is that when you click on it, it basically makes a copy of one of your worlds. However, you can actually edit the world without deleting the existing world. So as you can see, you can change everything. You can still change the seed, generate structures, world type, allow cheats, bonus chest, and etc. And also, when creating or recreating a world, if you set the world type to super flat, there's actually going to be a new button called Customize. And here you can actually customize your super flat world. So as you can see, there's these buttons down there, Add Layer, Edit Layer, Remove Layer, and Presets. Now, the only thing is that the Edit Layer and Add Layer features are currently not implemented into the game. That's why it says NYI not yet implemented. Or at least that's what I think it means. Now as I said before, there's also a presets button, and you can choose from some presets for your super flat worlds. So, um, as you can see, there's classic flat, but there's also some ones called Tunneler's Dream, Water World, Overworld, Snowy Kingdom, Bottomless Pit, which according to Dinnerbone is currently broken in the game, and Desert. First of all, here's Tunneler's Dream, and I am in super flat, just so you know. But what it does is that it adds a large stone layer into super flat. And as you can see, it goes on for a lot of blocks. I think there's... I think it goes on for over 200 blocks. I think 230 to be exact, but I can't remember. And that's basically all it is. And as you can see, there's uh, this white stuff here. That's actually the cloud layer. Because the ground of this super flat world is actually so high that the clouds actually generate here. And also because of this, Slimes do not spawn on the ground in this super flat world. Here's Water World. So as you can see, it's a uh, super flat world, except it's been completely flooded by water. So it's basically like an ocean biome, except flat. Here's the Overworld preset. Uh, it's not really anything special, it's just basically the same layers that the Overworld has. And the same amount of blocks that the layers have as well, so... Not really anything special. Here's Snowy Kingdom. So as you can see, this is a super flat world that's entirely covered in snow. And also, this super flat world is using a different biome than it usually does. Usually, super flat worlds use plains biome, but I believe this one is using either tundra or taiga biome. I think tundra. So I guess this could be used for, like, maybe winter-themed builds, and probably even winter-themed Minecraft videos as well. You never know. Here's the desert preset. So as you can see, it's a super flat world, except, well, it's a desert. It's just entirely covered in sand. 
Now below the sand is of course a sandstone layer which is actually supporting the sand. Now I do not know if villages are able to spawn in these kind of super flat worlds. I couldn't actually find one when I was uh, exploring them. But maybe they do spawn there, I don't know. See, you can tell that I'm losing my voice because I have to say everything so low pitched for goodness sakes. It's ridiculous. But that's all the presets for the super flat worlds, so on to the next feature. They retextured the carrot, so as you can see it has a new look. And actually it's just one single carrot now, so... Now along with that they've also retextured the golden carrot as well, so it looks similar to the regular carrot. My goodness, that's the second time the golden carrot had to be retextured for goodness sakes. A new food item was also added to the game, and that food item is pumpkin pie. And that's it right there. Now in order to craft a pumpkin pie, you need one pumpkin, one piece of sugar, and one egg. And you can put them anywhere in the crafting table, so the order of the order doesn't matter. So as you can see, I can just place them anywhere in the crafting table and still work. So, yeah. The pumpkin pie is also edible. When you eat it, it replenishes four bars of hunger. So yeah, that's a pretty good food item. Not too hard to find. All you need to find is a pumpkin and egg and sugar. They're generally easy to find. Now along with that, they've also changed the appearance of some of the food items in Minecraft as well. Um, as you can see, some of these food items do not have dark outlines anymore. Like the pork chops, steak, the raw beef, the chicken, bread, apple, and also the nether star as well. They no longer have dark outlines around them, which I guess makes them look more realistic. They also changed the texture for leather armor again. It now has a non-dyed layer, as you can see. So that's the layer of leather armor that is not dyed. It also looks different when you wear it as well. I'm just going to get over here. There we go. So as you can see, it looks a bit different. Alright then, so on to the next feature. If you press on a button, it now stays pressed down for a bit longer. Now this is not really noticeable because it only stays pressed down longer for about a fraction of a second. But if you look closely, you can see that the door is in fact staying open for a bit longer now. The same thing occurs with wooden buttons as well. It's not just limited to stone buttons. So uh, on to the next feature. You now get experience points for fishing. Alright, so it's going down and I catch a fish. And as you can see down below, my bar of experience points actually went up. Let's try that again then. And there we go. So the experience bar actually increased when I caught a fish. So fishing now awards you with experience points. So on to the next feature then. When riding a pig with the carrot on a stick, you can now make the pig jump. But not manually though. If there is a block in the way of the pig, the pig will automatically attempt to jump over the block. So as you saw right there, he jumped over some blocks. Let's make him jump over here. And there you go, he's jumping all over them. Now for some reason, I actually got suffocated right here. I don't, I'm not sure why. Maybe a bug? I wouldn't know. They also added in a new cheat command called clear. And what it does is that it clears your inventory. So I'm just going to do this here. Cleared the inventory of Dr. Robotnik 64, removing 129 items. So now I'm just going to set my game mode to survival here. And as you can see, my inventory is empty. And as you probably saw a few seconds ago, uh, the items that I was holding also disappeared. And as usual, they fixed various bugs in this snapshot. And apparently, I heard that if you set the game to hard mode now in 12W37A, mobs will be less fearless, or at least hostile mobs will. I'm not exactly sure about this though, because I didn't try it out yet. And to be honest, I don't feel like trying it right now. They added some new sounds for walking on certain blocks. First of all, grass. So there you go, the walking on grass sound is a bit different now, so it sounds, I guess, lighter. They also changed the walking sound for sand, so let's do it. And there you go, next gravel. And now soul sand. And now snow blocks. And last but not least, stowing. So there you go, some new sounds for walking on blocks. Now some of these sounds will actually overwrite the sounds of other blocks, so they'll actually sound the same depending on like what kind of surface they are, or they have I should say. But that's not it though, they also added some new sounds for mobs as well, like the cow for instance. So one of the new sounds that they can make is that they can make almost like a, I guess sort of breathing sound, I guess. 
They will, however, still make their old sounds. However, the old sounds that they make are a bit shorter now. Now apparently they also added in some new sounds for pigs, endermen, zombies, and skeletons. But when I spawned them into the game in 12W38A, they still made their old sounds. So, I don't really believe that to be honest. Putting down saplings also has a new sound. There's also a sound for climbing ladders now. Shears also make sounds now. So it makes a sort of cutting sound now. Flint and steel also makes noises now. So a new sound produced by flint and steel now. So there you go. So there are some of the new sound effects that they added, and as usual, the sound effects were made by C418. Now also, in creative mode, if you go through a nether portal, you will instantly get teleported to the nether. So no longer will you have to wait a few seconds before stepping into the nether portal before you're actually transported to the nether. But I believe this only works in creative mode at the moment. And it's probably only going to work in creative mode, it's probably never going to be added to survival mode. They also added two new mobs into the game, the first one being a bat. So there you go, there's the bat. Now, normally, these bats will spawn in dark caves, or they'll spawn underground, basically. And usually, they'll sleep during the day. They're also passive mobs, which means they spawn in peaceful mode. They do not harm the player, though. Now, I could not find any naturally spawning bats while I was uh, recording this footage that you're seeing here. But if you do encounter a bat in a cave, it'll be hanging down from the ceiling. And if you get near it, it'll start flying around. Now also, here's something weird I discovered about the bats. If you hit them, here's the sound that it makes. So if you manage to hit the bats, they actually make the same taking damage sound that the player does. Not sure if that's a bug or not, though. The second mob they add into the game is a witch. Now at the moment, witches do not spawn naturally in the game, but there is actually a spawn egg to spawn the witch, just like there is with bats. So here's the witch. So as you can see, it sort of looks like a villager, except it's not actually a villager. But if you're playing in creative mode, it may as well be. Now if you attack the witch, it'll start throwing splash potions at you. So as you can see, it actually throwed a splash potion of instant damage at me. Now the kind of splash potions that the witch can throw at you are splash potions of poison, weakness, slowness, and instant damage. They will also drink potions of instant health and fire resistance when you're attacking them. So as you can see, I have the effects slowness and poison on me right now. You can also throw splash potions of your own at the witch. However, the witch is immune to some splash potions. And actually, I forgot to mention something. Water also makes new sounds as well. So the splashes of the water sound more realistic now. Now if you manage to kill the witch, it will rarely drop potions of instant health and fire resistance. They also regenerate their health automatically over time. But yeah, so that's pretty much the witch mob for you. So on to the next feature then. As you can see, the beacon block looks different now. The glass surrounding it has a different appearance. And also for some reason it's missing its yellow cube. And not only that, but if you actually hold the beacon block, as you can see the yellow cube is there. So, probably some kind of bug maybe. They also made some changes to command blocks. The target perimeters for the command blocks have been upgraded. You can now add in additional optional arguments, and you can specify these arguments using brackets as you can see, and by using a syntax as well, like for instance r equals 5. Now here's what the syntax actually means. r I believe stands for range, and this was actually an example that Dinnerbone gave. So like for instance if you used at p to target the nearest player, and put r equals 5 in brackets, It'll target the nearest player and give them whatever item you specify, but only if they're in a range of five blocks from the command block. Otherwise, the command will fail and it'll not give you the items. Now, the new target parameters for the command blocks, they are pretty complex. I put a link in the description if you guys want to read more about the new target parameters for command blocks. But yeah, another thing they changed with the beacon blocks is that it gives off a new beam of light. So as you can see, it looks different now. And it actually animates, unlike the last one. And I guess it looks a bit more realistic. There you go, as usual, just extending right up into the sky. My goodness, almost looks as though I'm getting sucked up into the sky by some unknown force. My goodness. 
So yeah, new beam of light for the beacon block, so on to the next feature then. When you place down wood blocks, they will no longer rotate depending on the player's position. They will rotate depending on the kind of surface that they've been placed on. Like for instance, I can put them on like the side of a tree right there, and then they're actually going sideways. Now at the moment, this is only a test feature, so it may or may not be removed when the official 1.4 update comes out. But yeah. And also, apparently item frames will no longer despawn if you go 20 blocks away from them. And also, very rarely, stone monster egg blocks, which are blocks that spawn silverfish, might generate underground instead of in strongholds. Placing down blocks such as wooden planks or stone now use old sounds again. Grass blocks also have their old sounds as well. The same thing with gravel and sand. So there you go, when you place down these blocks, they will now make their old sounds again. But walking on them still makes their new sounds. Along with that, they also added sounds for minecarts. So there you go, minecarts now make sounds when traveling on rails. They also changed the sound for the player getting hurt by fall damage. So now when the player hits the ground, instead of making a sound like bones breaking, it now sounds like the player's body hitting the ground quite hard. And also I forgot to mention this, in 12W38A they added a new sound for leveling up. And they actually changed it slightly in 12W38B, here's what it sounds like. No, no, no. So there you go, there's now a sound for leveling up, and it was actually changed a bit in 12W38B. They also made some changes to the witch mob. The witch's texture has been changed slightly. Um, I don't really see a difference to be honest, but they were probably very small changes. They can no longer hurt themselves now, and they also drop new items. When you kill them, they will sometimes drop sticks. They will also be able to drop whatever they were holding at the time they died. And they can also drop ingredients for making potions. For instance, I kill a witch here, and it actually drops some glowstone. And glowstone, of course, can be used to make some certain potions. Here I kill another witch, and as you can see, this time it drops some redstone and a stick. Kill another one, and this time it dropped a spider eye. This one dropped two pieces of redstone. And this one dropped some glowstone and a glass bottle. So they can drop items that can be used in potions now. Well, first of all, the lighting system in Minecraft actually got a complete overhaul which means that the lighting in Minecraft is actually more realistic now. A lot of blocks in the game now interact correctly with lighting. For instance, furnaces. Now, uh, as you can see, I just built like a sort of wall made out of wooden planks, and uh, I'm just cooking something in the furnace. Now in 12W38B, if I were to look behind the furnace, I would see that the back of the furnace is actually giving off light. So as you can see, it's still giving off light even if you're looking at the back of the furnace. However, if I were to look behind the furnace in 12W39A, as you can see, there is no light being given off at the back of the furnace, because the front of the furnace is giving off light, so the back should not. Light can also pass through half slabs, so I basically made this creation of some kind, and I put two torches in there. As you can see, I put some slabs there, and the light gets blocked off. But as you can see, if there's just half slabs there, the light will still go through. And as you can see, there's no uh, lighting in the back. So basically, lighting is more realistic now. Now the only thing is that there is a bug with this. As you can see, the uh, the roofs of these houses, which are made of stairs, as you can see, they almost seem to have like black lines through them. So the lighting on the stairs is incorrect. But you can actually fix it. I believe if you place a block like near the stairs, it'll fix the lighting. So yeah, as you can see, the same thing with slabs. The same thing with farmland blocks, actually. As you can see, these farmland blocks almost appear to be like completely black. So that's kind of strange. They also fixed some bugs with the witch mob as well. Uh, apparently in 12W38B there was a bug where the witch would appear completely white for some people, but that's been fixed now. They also apparently changed the texture size of the witch, and I think probably because of the texture size change, 
The witch's textures almost appear to be, like, partially broken. I don't know, I just find that the hat looks kind of weird when viewed from the back. And also, uh, the sleeves as well. And actually, I think the entire hat is broken. Like, what kind of hat is that, for goodness sakes? Just parts of it are just floating. The head also appears a bit strange as well, so I don't really know what could be going on there. Other than that, the witch mob still attacks you like it usually does, so no changes in attacking. They also fix some bugs with some of the sounds in the game. Like, for instance, uh, in 12W38B, there was a bug where if you shot an arrow into water, the splashing sound of the water would just go on forever without stopping. But that's been fixed now. And apparently they also made other bug fixes and slight tweaks to the game, but they didn't specify what they actually were, so yeah. But as far as I know, that's all the new features that were added in 12W39A, so yeah. And also, one more thing with lighting. In 12W38B and older versions, the world would sometimes generate with like these black patches with just like no light at all. Like caves, for instance, they would just appear completely black. Well, that's been fixed now. They no longer appear pitch black anymore. So yeah, so the lighting system in Minecraft got a complete overhaul, which means it's more realistic now. Well, first of all, they made some changes to the Swampland biome. There is a new structure that can generate in Swamplands now called Swamp Huts. So here's what they look like. As you can see, they're made out of spruce wood planks, logs, and fences, door not included. And in these Swamp Huts, witches can spawn in them. So finally, witches can spawn naturally in the game. Now for some reason, when I found this Swamp Hut, there was actually not a witch in it, so I actually spawned one in myself. So here's the interior of the Swamp Hut. So as you can see, there's a flower pot with a red mushroom in it. There's a crafting table, and there's also a cauldron. Now in 12W40A, there was actually a bug where the crafting table and cauldron would spawn one block higher than they should have. But I'm guessing that was fixed in the B snapshot because they actually spawn on the floor, so yeah. And that's all there is to the Swamp Huts. Another thing they changed with the Swampland biome is that during nighttime or in low light levels, slimes can actually spawn overground. So as you can see, there's some slimes that have spawned naturally. But just remember, this only occurs in Swampland biomes. It doesn't occur in any other biome. There's some more slimes over there. So yeah, they added in a new super flat preset called Redstone Ready, which is basically a world made out of sandstone. And there you go, so there's a bunch of sandstone here. And this super flat world is made up of 52 layers of sandstone, three layers of stone, and one layer of bedrock. Structures that normally generate in default worlds can now generate in super flat worlds. Like for instance, trees. So this is actually the Tunneler's Dream preset, and as you can see, trees now spawn in the preset. And if we go down here, there's some coal ore, as you can see. So ores can now generate in super flat worlds. Here's the overworld preset, and as you can see, tall grass and flowers now generate here, along with pools of water, even pools of lava, as you can see. There's some coal ore. Mine shafts can now generate in super flat worlds, and also strongholds. So as you can see, the ender eye actually works here in super flat. Blocks and items such as pumpkins and sugarcane can now spawn naturally here. Rivers can also generate along with dungeons. So here's a stronghold in super flat world. There's some bats. So now you can get to the end dimension legitimately in super flat worlds. At least if you're using creative mode anyway. So here's the overworld preset. As you can see, decoration, dungeon, lake, mineshaft, and lava lake. So when you're creating a custom super flat world, you can put in those lines of text in your preset, and it'll generate dungeons, lakes, mineshafts, and lava lakes, and so on. There's also biome underscore one, as you can see, so I guess you can use that preset maybe to change the biome that the super flat world uses. But yeah, so structures that normally generate in default or large biome worlds can now generate in super flat worlds. They also made some improvements to inventory management. Like for instance, the pick block key now works on items, so as you can see, I used a pick block key on wheat, and it gave me seeds. If I use it on that flower, it gives me the flower. And if I go over here and use the pick block key on the torch, it gives me the torch. Also, if you use the 1 to 9 keys on your keyboard, while your cursor is hovering over an item, it'll put that item in the inventory bar. For instance, I have my cursor hovering over the diamond hoe item, and if I clicked on the 2 key on my keyboard, as you can see, it puts it in the second slot in my inventory bar. And if my cursor was hovering over and I clicked on 8, it would go to the 8th slot, as you can see. The flower, click on 5, and it goes to the 5th inventory slot. And if I were to put the diamond hoe in the actual inventory, and I clicked on 8, it goes to the 8th slot, as you can see. Also, if you're playing on creative mode, you can now shift-click things from the inventory bar into the survival inventory screen. And if you tried to do this before, it would just delete the item. 
So there you go, some improvements to inventory management, so on to the next feature then. You can no longer open doors and trap doors, and you can no longer activate levers and buttons by using the left mouse button. So now you have to use the right mouse button. So as you can see, I'm clicking on the left mouse button, but it's not actually opening the door. Try to left click on a lever, and as you can see, it doesn't work. Left clicking on a button doesn't work either, and left clicking on a trap door also does not work. So now you have to use the right mouse button to open doors and trap doors and activate levers and buttons. They also changed the appearance of the beacon block again. So as you can see, there's no longer a yellow cube rotating in the center. It's just one giant cube that almost sort of looks like a diamond cube, and it doesn't rotate. And also, the beam of light that is emitted by the beacon has also changed. So as you can see, the beam of light looks rectangular now. And if you're actually flying inside the beam of light, it creates a sort of interesting effect, actually. So there you go, we're actually inside the beam of light. My goodness, it almost looks as though we're being teleported somewhere. Either that or we're warping through space. So yeah, that kind of creates an interesting effect. The changes that they made to lighting in 12W39A have actually been reverted, which actually fixes some bugs, such as the nether being CPU intensive and creating a new world taking an extremely long time. However, this does bring back an old bug, which are the black patches that you see right here. And apparently, Dinnerbone mentioned that he might try again with changing the lighting system maybe in Minecraft 1.5. But yeah, so the old lighting system is back, and apparently fire spread has been slightly nerfed again so that fires no longer spread infinitely. The first feature that they added is that they added a new item into the game called an anvil, and the anvils can be used for repairing weapons and tools, and they are crafted by putting six blocks of iron and one iron ingot into the crafting table in this fashion right here. Now also, not only can you repair weapons or tools using the anvil, you can also rename your weapon or tool, and if you have two weapons, let's say a diamond sword for instance, that are enchanted, you can actually combine the enchantments together. Like for instance, here's a diamond sword with smite 1 and another diamond sword with fire aspect 1 and knockback 1. And as you can see, the enchantments get combined. It'll give me a diamond sword with smite 1, fire aspect 1, and knockback 1. Now the only thing is that as you can see, this will actually cost you experience levels. And renaming it as you can see will cost even more levels. Combining the enchantments cost only 20 levels. But as you can see, combining the enchantments and renaming it costs 35 levels. So for instance, I rename my Diamond Sword to Creeper Slayer, and as you can see, it's actually called Creeper Slayer and not Diamond Sword. So you can actually give custom names to your weapons or tools, so yeah. Now over time, the anvil will become damaged. So this one that I'm pointing at right here is the regular anvil, this one's a damaged anvil, and this one is a very damaged anvil. Anvils can also be used for another purpose as well. Like gravel and sand, anvils are actually affected by gravity, and if it is dropped on a mob or a player, the mob or the player will take damage, depending on the height the anvil fell down from. So for instance, I'm going to drop one on a creeper here, and as you can see, he actually takes damage, but not enough damage that it actually kills the creeper. So I build some glass blocks here, and we're going to drop the anvil all the way from up here, and it's going down, and there we go, it actually killed the creeper. So the anvil could also be used for killing unsuspecting mobs and players. But yeah, so that's pretty much all that the anvil does, so on to the next feature then. There is a new button in the options menu called multiplayer settings. And as you can see, the chat settings have actually been moved to here. But there's also a new setting called show cape. And what that setting does is that if a player owns a cape in Minecraft, you can choose whether the cape should be shown or hidden, so yeah. You can now use custom mob spawners or NBT tags to configure the explosion radius and fuse timer on a creeper, which means that you can now configure how long the creeper takes before it actually explodes, and you can also configure how huge the explosion is, so yeah. The effects that are given off by the beacon block are apparently less intrusive on the screen now, but to be honest, I don't really see a change, and when you actually go inside the uh, beam of light, it still looks as though you're being teleported through space or something, so yeah. Breeding mobs now gives you experience orbs, so as you can see, I'm breeding two cows here. And there you go, I actually got some experience orbs from that. Try it with some sheep. And there you go, I'm now at level 1. So breeding animals now gives you experience orbs. The leveling up sound now only plays every 5 levels. So as you can see, I got to level 2. However, it just played the regular experience orb collecting sound. Now if I level up to level 5, like so... it actually plays the leveling up sound. So now the leveling up sound will only play after every five levels that you level up to. Also, the leveling up sound sounds a bit quieter for some reason. 
the crafting recipe for the anvil has been changed. So now it only requires three iron blocks and four iron ingots in this fashion. So now it's much easier to craft anvils. They also apparently made some minor visual changes to anvils. However, once again, I don't really see a difference. Yeah, just so you know, I'm not really a visual person, so I can't really spot these, like, small differences. You can now repair weapons and armor with anvils using their source material. So as you can see, here's a enchanted diamond sword that's been slightly damaged. And in the second slot, there's a diamond. And as you can see, it actually repairs the sword. So by source material, it means the material that the item was crafted from. So considering that diamond swords were crafted from diamonds, I can actually use diamonds to repair diamond swords. Now also, if you actually rename an item, it'll now appear in italics, as you can see. And they also fix some bugs relating to anvils as well. Redstone repeaters can now become locked. So if you power a redstone repeater directly with another repeater, it'll become locked in its current state until the signal to the powering repeater is turned off. And when the repeater becomes locked, as you can see, one of the torches on the repeater actually disappear, and something that sort of looks similar to bedrock replaces it. If a repeater that is off is locked, it cannot output a signal. So as you can see, I'm trying to flip the lever, but it's not doing anything. And if a repeater that is on is locked, it'll stay on, as you can see. So yeah, so there's some changes to redstone repeaters. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this will break old redstone creations, so you'll just have to see that for yourself, so I don't know. And there you go, so that's the end of this montage. So that's all of the new features videos that I did for the 1.4 snapshots. So hopefully that should have explained to you most of the new features that are going to be added in 1.4, so yeah. But that's pretty much it for now, so if you want, feel free to like or favorite this video, or maybe even subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video I make. Later.